Good morning. So today we are going to talk about implementing AI into your Laravel projects. So the way we can do this is we can just start by creating a new uh, AI directory in our modules. And inside of here, we'll need a couple of things. First of all, we'll need a service and we'll need a client. And uh, let me quickly tell you the difference. So basically in our service, uh, we would have like, you know, AI service, we could, you know, give it like a fancy name too. So it's not AI, it's like, I don't know, sprinkles or whatever. Um, so we can, you know, brand it, uh, whatever your, your business site desires. And here we'll basically have everything that our domain needs. So we'd have like a public function, uh, you know, it will depend on your use case, but for example, um, generate greeting, right? And inside of this, uh, we'll call this client, we'll call a generate method on this and pass some data. Um, so why do we need a client and why are we separating that? Well, if we ever want to stop using OpenAI and we want to start using, I know, some, some other AI, we will always be able to do this. So let's create like an AI interface or AI client interface. And uh, we can create like a public function generate on this that will return a string or some DTO that will be a result. We'll get to that in a second. But for now, let's create a new directory called data transfer objects. And uh, we'll basically need one for in and out. So we'll need some AI commands DTO. And this will be a read only class. Oh, are we not in? I think we are not on PHP 8.2 on this project. Maybe. Um, either way, this will, you know, get us some data and then we'll create an AI results DTO. And again, we'll have a structure that will accept some data. So for the result, we will really need um, public string output. Uh, we should make three only, and uh, we can do something like public read only int tokens if we want to charge the client for how many tokens they used in the external system, for example. Um, so that seems all right. So now our AI interface should return that AI result DTO. And as a parameter, it will get AI comment DTO. Okay, so now let's create a client that actually implements that contract. So let's just call it OpenAI client. And this client should obviously, you know, implement AI client interface and we should add the method steps. Or we could just call it a client without the, the interface, just so it's nicer uh, slightly. Okay, but um, now we'll need to install the SDK for OpenAI. So from this repo, we can just copy that comment and we can paste it in our terminal and let's give it some time to finalize the install. But basically what we can do now is we can, in our constructor, uh, you know, we can do like a protected client. This will come from OpenAI uh, and we should name it obviously. And in our constructor, we can basically do this client equals OpenAI client and we need to pass the API key so we can define uh, services that open AI that key. And if we go to our services, we can go to the very bottom, add the open AI and then paste the key, which will call our ENV. So it's open AI API key. So now what we can do is we can simply uh, call this client chat create. And there is a couple of things that you can specify here. It will, you know, depend on your uh, on your preferences, but you can like specify a model. So I will use GPT 3.5 Turbo. Uh, now you'll provide messages, which is an array of what the chat is. And then from the result, you will get some, uh, some information. So for now, let's just return an empty DTO. 
and we can wrap this all in a try catch. So if the weather fails, we can throw some useful exception. Uh, so the way we can do this is we can create a new directory called exceptions, and inside of here we can create AI exception, which will implement internal exception. Uh, we did that. Sorry, that will extend internal exception. So we created this in a previous episode. Uh, if you want, you can watch that. Uh, I will just copy that. It will basically be an exception. Uh, I'll just create a new one called uh, general error. And let's just, or well, AI generation error. And we'll just prefix that with 1200. Well, let's just call it unknown error. And instead of here, we can simply throw AI yeah, exception, unknown error. And uh, we can report that exception just so we know what really happened. Okay, so now we'll need to get the result from that. So we can do something like output equals, and we can do exactly this. Um, so like, I don't want to have any, you know, dots at the end. I want to replace new lines with paste. Like basically I want to trim it down as much as possible. Um, it will depend on your project, but I find this to be pretty useful. Uh, if you don't care about this, sure, whatever, you can just remove it. And now we can simply pass the output here. All right. So now all that's left is to pass messages here. Okay. So. In OpenAI, there is a couple of ways that you can define the roles and like the context of the conversation. The easiest way to do this is to uh, pass role of the system, and then you can pass the content. So like this is the the format that you know he can use. Um, so we can do you know DTO. We can call it task or goal. Then we can also create the prompt, so something that the user will provide. And let's add these two here. So basically, uh, we can create a public read-only string called prompt. We can do the same for the task, or we call it goal. We called it goal. Uh, uh, I think task is better. And if we want to, we can also provide some context. So we can just do public read only array context. And we can default that to an empty array if we don't have one. So we can simply inline this, uh, sorry, DTO context. Now, what I don't like is the context is kind of bound to the OpenAI format. So what we can do to circumvent that is we can create a new DTO called um, AI context DTO. And inside of here, you know, we basically have the, the role and the content. So let's just recreate that right here. Uh, let's just define a new constructor. And inside of here, we'll want a public string content. And we also need the role. And, you know, the role should be passed as an enum. So we'll just create a new enums directory. And inside of here, I'll just do AI context role. And this can be an enum that maps to a string. And we can simply do system user and assistant. I believe are the three types that we can pass there. Uh, this should be read only, and we can do public read only AI context role. Oh. Okay, so now 
In our DTO, we can define that the context should be truly an array of AI context role. And, you know, knowing that, we can simply use some transformator inside of here to create our context from our DTO. So the context will be simply, uh, you know, this, prepare context, and we can just pass DTO context. And we can simply now pass the context here. Let's add this new function. This should return an array. And for each context as uh, context list as context, we'll do something to the output and then return the output. Uh, so let's just name it context list. And our output will simply be, you know, a role and a comment and the content. So for the content, we can also type in that this uh, AI comment DTO, uh, AI context, ugh, AI context DTO will be our context. So this will give us some autocomplete. So now we can do context content and we can do context role value uh, just because you know they are exactly the same in our uh, example but if we need to map that we can also map that beforehand if we were ever to use a different provider that doesn't use these roles so now uh, you can see that we have this sort of like duplication of this array shape uh, here here and here uh, what we could do is we could do a protected function create context array and here we could pass our AI context DTO. And this could simply return, you know, role equals DTO role value and content, content uh, DTO context content. Jesus Christ, these are too similar for me. So with that set, what we can do is we can simply do this, create context array. and just pass the context. And same will be true here. Um, so we can do this create context array and pass this new DTO. So, you know, new AA context DTO. And the content will be DTO task. Role will be AI role system. So, you know, we could also very easily just pass, uh, require this DTO to be passed in our common DTO, but I feel like this will decrease the, uh, the ease of use of this class from the external sources. Uh, so this will be user and this will be prompt. Okay, now this looks okay. Uh, and we have a very simple DTO that we can use externally. So how do we use it? Well, we go to our AI service and instead of here in our constructor, we'll just do protected AI client, client. And now we can simply call this generate function and pass our DTO. So we can do new AI common DTO and we can do task and we can do prompt. So a task, it could really be called identity, honestly. Uh, because prompt would be, you know, generate a welcome message for John. And the task would be, you know, uh, you are a uh, helpful AI consultant called uh, Bobby. Your job is to uh, create welcoming, welcome messages. Um, so yeah, calling that task kind of sucks. Let's just refactor that to identity or identity role, you know, something like that. Um, either way, 
if we were to use this, we'd get an error because AI client is an interface that's not bound. So we can go to our app service provider and we can bind our AI service, uh, our AI client to be AI open AI client. Okay. So, you know, here you could also do something like, uh, you know, result equals this and, you know, you would do, you know, user charge, uh, you know, I know 500 bucks times the amount of tokens or like, you know, some of your, in some of your internal currency or whatever, uh, based on the token counts that this returned. Um, so, but this isn't the scope of this, this lesson. Uh, I'll just return that. So let's just do a uh, PHP artisan thinker. And from here we can do app AA service plus, and let's just call generate rethink it. And it kind of just works. I obviously added my open AI credentials in the background, but, uh, yeah, you should do the same. So the last thing to do is to add this, uh, token count. Okay, so I'll just do DD on result usage. And we can simply do total tokens and return that inside of here. So this will give us like some sort of, you know, price that we can use to charge our customers if we want to do that in our system. Okay, so maybe this was not a good idea. Uh, again, how the line breaks. Yeah, that's probably better. Or we could just replace the line breaks to spaces, not to nothing. That's kind of damp. Uh, all right. So I guess that's all I wanted to show you guys. Hope you enjoyed this and good luck with your AA journey. Have fun.